Welcome to the Artist Advisory Hotline, the podcast for artists who want valuable guidance and honest answers on how to grow their careers and develop their new project from leading art world experts and artists. Here's your host and founder of the Artist Advisory, Marina Press Granger. Tune in as she gets you the answers you deserve. Hello, artists. I'm your host, Marina Granger. And today we have such an amazing guest. She has been on the show before. Her name is Christy Gordon. And she is just one of the best artists out there. I absolutely love her work. And she's working on a book right now about finding your artistic voice. It's going to be coming out in October 2024 with Page Street Publishing. And she's here to talk to us about how you can hone in on your artistic voice and get into this vibe of like making your work without being stuck, without feeling stuck about what to make next, without feeling weird about it so that you're super authentic when you go into it. I know when I've worked with artists and I feel like there's you know, there's one thing that I can't do. It's exactly this. I always send some artists to Christy because I know that she'll guide them in the right direction when it comes to making their work. She's just so, so talented. So Christy, thank you so much for coming on. I'm so excited to see you here um, and to see you again. So how's it going? (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be here and to see you again and talk to you, Marina. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, first of all, finding your artistic voice. This is like a huge thing. And we've got a whole podcast episode that people can listen to. Um, I'll link it in the show notes where you speak about it. But briefly, how do you find your artistic voice? Well, I guess it really is getting in touch with your own, like, artistic, and you know, impressions and intuitions and just really being honest with yourself about what you like. But it also helps to have a consistent practice that's just, you know, small little amounts of time every day that's consistent. And that's when inspiration flows and processing the pains that we face as an artist regularly so that we don't get blocked and I've developed a five-step process. It was actually hard for me to find my artistic voice. And in desperation, almost divinely guided one day, I wrote down this plan of action and I followed it and miraculously it worked. And found, I, you know, I found my voice and now that's the, basically the, the framework that I share. I would love to hear more about your framework, but before we dive into that, what happens, you know, generally to an artist who's you know, not found their artistic voice, what are some of the feelings and (laughs) moments that they tend to face? Well, a lot of what I was facing early on, like you might get some artistic success, you might get into a gallery, you might, you know, sell some paintings, but you'll sort of feel like bored with the work eventually and have to kind of shift styles. And that can be really inconvenient because a lot of the time then you'll have to like change galleries and all your collectors will you know, not like your new work and um and you and you know and then you might start to get blocked as an artist too which happened to me and it just gets harder and harder to paint or whatever your art form is and you might feel like a total failure which is what I totally felt like you know and, and you may have even put everything into it which was the place where I was at where you know I'd gone to a BFA and done my MFA in painting and still I knew I hadn't found my voice and and I wasn't really getting the art you know like the art career artistic success that I saw some of my peers who had got who had found their artistic voice I wasn't having things just fall into place and I felt like a total failure so it could it could be those types of feelings yeah like there's also the one thing that comes up to for me is like is you know there's like this artistic block that comes up right but is that also the same as just like procrastination or you know can you talk a little bit about that because is it different if you're just like 
you know, procrastinating Mm -hmm. versus you are actually having an artistic block. How do you know? Oh, I wonder how, you know, I think like the block just goes on for a long time and feels really overwhelming and sad. Procrastination can kind of lead to blocks too. Like it could be the start of a block. Like I found that, um, Eventually, I had to start just painting for 25 minutes every day. And that helped me move out of procrastination, which can actually be a real problem for artists as well. Um, And gradually, I started to realize that in doing this measly little 25 minutes a day, I was moving forward on my paintings. I would feel like I was like being tortured for 25 minutes and ruining the painting for the entire 25 minutes. But at the end, I'd sit back and realize that I actually had made it like a little bit better And I was surprised by that because I felt sure that I was ruining it the whole time. So the loud voices in my head about how terrible everything I was painting, um, eventually I started to realize that they weren't necessarily true. And those same loud voices, though, can be, um, or they can be quiet voices too, but those, you know, persistent They're there and we don't want them. They're there. They're always (laughs) there. And they could be contributing to procrastination too. So I actually think procrastination might be a very small form like of a block, like there's actually a relationship now that you mention it. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all about, and I mean, no matter what you do, I'm sure it's all about like stepping into alignment and feeling authentic about what it is that you're doing because that fuels the fire. And exactly, you know, when the fire is fueled, you've got plenty of um, energy to go and do the thing. That's so. exactly, exactly it. Like I used to feel like I had to wait for inspiration to strike in order to paint. But then I realized with this 25 minutes a day framework, which sounds so small, I know that inspiration comes from doing it. So the more we do this like consistent work, the more inspiration you know comes and we feel like in the flow and yeah, energized, like it's deeply fulfilling to paint and you get these moments of awe, you know, all of the things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. So Christy, tell us a little bit about your five-step framework. What is it, you know, for artists who are listening, who are resonating with this feeling of, ah, you know, <laughs> I've got to go paint, but I don't know, or I've got to go make something, but I don't know what or how, or I don't feel excited about it. What is your five-step framework to getting into alignment there? Yeah. So the first one is clearing blocks using brain drain writing, which is something that Julia Cameron talks about as like these morning pages in the Artist Way book. And so that's where I got the inspiration for this. Just writing three pages of free flow writing every day. I don't necessarily do it in the morning, which is why I call it brain drain writing. I do it sometimes at night to help me sleep too. And then within that, like within my visionary artist master program, there's some assignments where we'll kind of delve into, you know, pains that we've had as an artist, like any criticism we've faced and write about it in detail, try to remember everything about it. And then say somebody said something to us about our art that as artists, we try to pretend like we have a thick skin, but it actually really gets to us and it really hurts <laughs> us. And we need to kind of go into that whole experience, remember it all in detail. And then I suggest that we write back, like we talk back to the person and say what we didn't say then, like stand up for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I love so, that. So, oh yeah. Gosh, that is amazing. Because, you know, it's important to process this stuff. Yeah. And just let it fester. But okay, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that that was one of the things that really was, it had built up inside me. It was like creating a block. So this brain drain writing is super powerful. And once you start doing it, like I still do it to this day and it just keeps the flow, keeps, you know, um, yeah, the flow happening in our process. And uh, the next tool is this, I already mentioned it, 25 minutes a day, just creating for 25 minutes a day and, and creating a habit of doing the 25 minutes a day. And like, I've even done 25 minutes a day on a day that I'm moving. Like I just do it all every day. So it's a very doable amount, but it's, you know, yeah, really small, but actually so powerful. Like if, I don't know what it adds up to, if you add up 25 minutes for 365 days a year, I don't know, you know, it's a lot of time actually. So where I used to have weeks go by and I wouldn't do any painting at all, 
And now I do this measly, totally doable 25 minutes a day. And I end up getting so much done. Like it looks like I'm pretty prolific, but you know, I'm not working. Like I, it sounds like not that much time, but it also helps you to move forward on paintings where you don't know what to do. It allows like your ideas to percolate and kind of guidance to come to you, like intuition to sort of guide the work, which is one of the fun things. You know, Christy, this is like, I, I, uh, while you were talking about this, I like pulled out my calculator and I was like, wait, how, <laughs> how many hours is that? It's, um, it's 9,100 minutes, right? Whoa. So that's a lot of minutes. So how it many is a hours lot. is that? Um, yeah, it's 9,125. So let's see. It's 152 hours. That's yeah. a lot of time. It is a lot of time. And yeah. a little side note here. So Christy, you sort of like inspire me to be also in like great physical health. <laughs> um, I have been doing this thing where I'm like, if I only go to the gym for like 25 or half an hour yeah. a day, and it feels like, oh, it's not, you know, we, we sometimes we think like, oh, you have to do like the full hour or an hour and a half. And it's like so much pressure to put on yourself in anything because things come up. We have life, but we can all commit to that like 25 minutes or a half hour or whatever it is. So I think about you <laughs> when I go to the gym for like 25 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> That she inspires me. I need to do that with the gym too. Yeah. And the thing yeah. with the 25 minutes of creating. We belong to the same gym, you guys. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And the thing with the 25 minutes of creating is that um, it's like we we just do a little bit. Like it's a, there can be a temptation actually to do that thing that you're mentioning where we're like, oh, but I should paint for three hours. And it's almost discouraged. Or, or I should paint for eight hours. But it almost takes some practice to really be like, okay, I did my 25 minutes check, like success, you know, and just let that be enough. But the more we do that, the more we can show up consistently for our our practice. Mm -hmm. That's so good. All right. So what's the third step? So the third one is um, kind of engaging our intuition in our work. And, and we do that with intuitive painting, which is where you basically, it's something I learned about in Nini Saliba's book, Painting the Landscape of Your Soul. And you basically, it's like with your intuition, your first thought is your best thought. And so we get in touch with that even more deeply by allowing our first thought to be what we do as we paint. And we'll find, you know, we might have a thought and immediately question it like, what? No, I can't do that. But instead, you know, to just do it and then do the next thought and not even be trying to make the painting look good. Just let go altogether of this like thing that's really bogging us down about making good art and just instead only do our first thought and then our next thought let the, the, our intuition guide our work. And it connects our intuition into our work. And later we find that our intuition starts to guide us with our finished paintings too. But with these intuitive paintings, it's like, it's amazing what people come up with. Like, it can be so surprising what comes out of us. And, I, and I've seen that with the artists that I've worked with in the Visionary Artist Master Program. Where we're just in awe. Like, we don't expect these things to come out of us. And we're like, this is really amazing and cool like the logical brain never could have come up with it so a lot of the time and I, I've done this myself where the intuitive painting almost becomes like an image idea generation and you know we might then take an intuitive painting and refine you know develop it into a finished painting which is exactly what I've um done with most people can't see me but I'm I'm on zoom right now and I have a painting as my background it's called the cosmic lotus and that painting was actually originally conceived of as, as an intuitive painting. Yeah. So mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Well, quick question for you. You know, I'm yes. sure there are artists listening who are like, well, I don't know if I'm a good enough painter or good enough artist yet to do this sort of thing. So what do you say to them, to those yeah. people who might think that? That's such a good question. And it's never too early to start engaging our authentic voice in our work. Like it can sort of um, almost be a barrier if we've got so much training, which is where I was, you know, where I was at when I started to 
investigate my own voice. And it's fine. You can still start to investigate your voice, even if you have lots of training. But I've worked with artists who were just getting started with painting and they started to incorporate their own voice into their work and they developed their technique simultaneously with exploring their voice. And their work is like so beautiful. They got good so fast and they're, you know, getting picked up by top galleries. It's like absolutely amazing. They've never even gone to art school, but some of the people that I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of. Yeah. I keep thinking about one artist who I started working with like five years ago and I nudged her in your direction because I was like, I think she needs a Christy moment. <laughs> and I think about her and I'm like, oh my gosh, I saw her work a few years later at an art fair and it was just like a whole different vibe. Like her painting was um, you know, I always say this, I'm like, I'm not a critic. I can't, I don't know if it's, I think, you know, art is subjective, but her painting was so much better. <laughs> and I think it was one of those things where you literally said to her something like, it, it was just like a, a, a reframing of how to actually look at what you're painting, like almost like one of those things like, oh, you know, like an eye is not flat, it's a sphere. So, <laughs> you know, don't paint it like it's flat, right? I know that about painting. I'm not an artist, but I feel like Good. you nudge artists um, with these like very quick reframes that completely change the way that they paint. Aww, thank yeah. you so much. And and I, I think I know the artist that you're talking about. I think we've had a couple that we've yeah. shared, but oh, and she's so amazing and talented. Amazing. <laughs> and one of the things... Yes, I do it. Shout out to you. Yes, totally. Um, And one of the things about when we find our voice, like I was working with an artist a number of years ago, and she was trying to paint representational portraits. And we worked for a long time, you know, trying to do that. And she was, she would tell me every time that it was so hard for her. She'd work really hard on it, you know. And then, and then one day I went to her studio, and she had started doing these paintings that were more, you know, her true voice. And they were a bit more fluid and they just flowed easily out of her. And suddenly she wasn't struggling, but it drew on like all of her training and all of the stuff that she'd been working on for so long. So I feel like when we find our voice, it's not quite as hard as it's it's still challenging, actually, you know, but it's not quite as hard as it is when we're trying to paint something that's not authentically us. Yeah, totally. All yeah. right. So what is our fifth and final step is that where we're at or there's two left actually oh there's so two there's, left okay yes no it's good so um brainstorming with thumbnails is the next one that we do where we just do a little idea for a painting a teeny little sketch a thumbnail is like a small sketch just a quick little scribble most of the time and we just fill our our sketchbook up by doing a little thumbnail every day that's like an idea for a painting and then the final step and this is something you definitely know a lot about oh wait do you want to say anything about brainstorming yeah, the yeah yeah when you do these like little thumbnail sketches where do you do that? like is that a sketchbook situation yeah 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 I do like to do it in a sketchbook because actually I like then to have this sketchbook full of ideas that are sort of worked out a little bit compositionally so that then whenever I'm like ready to start a new painting I can flip through my database of ideas and and never be at a loss you know I always be able to find something that I want to get started on and this is in addition to the 25 minutes right so as far as the 25 minutes ago I actually you can sort of decide for yourself I act it's like as long as you're doing anything you could count your brainstorming with thumbnails and your intuitive painting towards your 25 minutes a day you know a lot of the time I definitely will like if there's anything involving a paintbrush on a surface or a pencil that can count towards your 25 minutes a day some artists would like like end up wanting to count 25 minutes a day as work that's being done towards their personal work you know their actual finished paintings so it sort of is up to each artist how they want to it's a good question but it's kind of up yeah. to each person okay yeah. it's up to you it's choose your own adventure there. <laughs> um yeah and speaking of choosing your own adventure this method does it work only for artists who do two-dimensional work who do painting and drawing or no it actually works for all art forms like um there's a lot of sculptors in my book I like draw on um a lot you know I talk to a lot of my artist friends and see how this connects with their creative practice so 
there's a lot of sculptors that definitely work in similar ways doing like little maquettes you know instead of like um brainstorming with thumbnails in a sketchbook they might be doing like a little little maquette before they like do their finished sculpture and yeah so it, it works it works with all different like mediums or yeah art forms love that okay all right so let's get to the the last and final step the grand yes. finale step <laughs> yes well the the last step is knowing your world and I feel like that's where you really help artists because it's so important for us to understand like how our work fits into the bigger conversation of what's being created on around us, you know, having a bit of a grounding of art history and you know, contemporary art. So I suggest that people just start to read one article every day. And it's these baby steps. It's like, that's my whole theory for everything. So they're just taking little, little baby actions every single day to start to know how their work fits into you know, art history and like and contemporary art. And also if um, I suggest reading, like you can either read about art history and, and a, or an artist that you like, or you can kind of alternate that between that and a technical like aspect of your creative practice that you want to get better at. So I suggest if you're a painter, reading about color and composition each day as well. So understanding like the language of our medium and kind of refining that is also part of knowing your world um so it's yeah so this five-step process is kind of a holistic view of like everything that we kind of need to be doing as artists and just baby steps with each one every like daily little baby steps oh I love that Christy thank you so much this is so this provides so much clarity uh just to me but I'm sure to the artists who are listening yeah. and yeah you're so this is so these five steps that you've broken it down into make it feel surmountable mm, you know that's exactly and, what I want yeah and that is so so cool so tell us a little bit more about how we can learn more about these five steps before your book comes out in October <laughs> yes well right now I'm um there's registrations open for my visionary artist master program vamp for short and people can go to christygordoncourses.com and just click the learn more button when they see um, Visionary Artist Master Program. Or you could also go to my Instagram at christygordonart and just click the link in my bio. And when you do, there's actually a free webinar on the page that you'll be taken to as well as enrollment information. So you can even watch a webinar about the process a little bit more too. I love that, Christy. Thank you so, so much. We'll be sure to link that in the show notes. And to those of you listening, I just want to say, don't put it off till next year. Don't put it off till October. There's no time like the present. So thank you so much, Christy, for your valuable input, for this clarity, for this sense of, you know, you got this. <laughs> it just makes me feel like, you got this, you know, Aww. and so I'm sure the artists listening feel the same way. And thank you for breaking it down for us. Oh, thank you so much for having me and chatting with me about this. And I'm just such a huge admirer of everything that you do and everything you do to help artists. So thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thanks, you. Marina. Thank you so much for listening. Support your community by sharing this podcast, leaving a review, and follow The Artist Advisory on Instagram at the underscore artist underscore advisory. And visit us online at www.theartistadvisory.com.